once was a fan with a narrowing taste of what pulls me away from home. With the climbing rise of live action remakes and no end in sight. When the hell will we get a Johnny Bravo? A true diamond in the rough of Disney live-action remakes so far, and if it's any inclination of what's to come, i.e. Lion King, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Little Mermaid, Fantasia, just with no Nick Cage this time, which is the only time I'll request this. <clears throat> Sorcerer's Apprentice. If you were one of those whom raged quit upon the Entertainment Weekly cover or the first trailer showing the genie, you were not alone. But yet... The quality shown in these trailers were, were not much improved for the finished product, both in tone and CGI. And soundtrack too, I guess. A soundtrack I have extensive mixed feelings about. To which at first you may just straight up hear essentially auto-tuned karaoke, mine and most likely your favorite tracks from childhood. And this is where the biased critic in me steps in. No doubt the leads and actors have talent, yes, yet, they still sound robotic, especially Big Willie Smith. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It definitely takes some getting used to getting jiggy with the classics, but once you get past the whole Fresh Prince aspect, most of his tracks are rather enjoyable. Some would even say, magical. Ha ha, dog! <laughs> he tries impressions, accents, characters, and different shtick than just his wistfully swagger Will Smith just has attached to him, which had me mildly to wildly entertained. But you already knew it would never compare to the original. Uh-huh. Mm-mm-mm. Though still very much worth a listen or boogie down to. Other than Smith, at most points it sounds as though Mena Masood and Naomi Scott, which is Aladdin and Jasmine, are just trying to show off their skills and vibratos, opposed to telling a story or convey the emotions of the characters in that scene. Then there are the guest quote-unquote artist covers, like Zayn Malik's from X Factor and DJ Khaled, DJ Kaladin, rap remix, Habibi. But what I want to highlight is the instrumentals that sound more Indian, Siberian, fantastic. Thanks to Alan Menken, focusing more on the diversity feel, and I would advise having an ear open for them in particular, and God forgive me. dubbing them better than the original even. No? Well, you tell me. Let me know in the comments below or facebook.com slash Dr. T Show. Did you think the instrumentals in the Aladdin remake were better than the original? But the soundtrack was not the only aspect updated. The whole movie itself was more politically corrected with a much less stereotypical, offensive culture setting and opening for the film. Though, most have said the whole opening altogether, the Arabian Nights beginning may have set the tone for the rest and even ruined their impression of this remake in the first two minutes. Which I almost shared this with, but I was gleefully swayed. I'm sure you have or will, but I dare you to walk into the theater and try to believe in the characters on their own and just try to see the same story. The same empowering message mixed with some more girl humor, uh, genie sex fantasies, wildly noticeable wigs, and wildly amazing choreography. And yay for pointy shoes and pointy ears. You know who I'm talking about. The blue hitch genie, who was fun and very entertaining. I make this look good. And definitely, definitely grows on you with his perma glittery skin, CGI nipples with a little bit of Kazam Shaquille added in. And yes, with the CGI being somewhat hard to get used to with those just lifeless eyes and yet somehow still full animated of life, which once again, once again, will never, never compare to Robin Williams and and Jafar. Oh, 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 Jafar. Jafar just wasn't there. He's, yeah, he still pulled off a whole creepy, evil villain just with more of a stalker pedophile vibe. Bring me the lamp, Aladdin. I will be told him. <laughs> the class that just had so much character, so much umph, so much fear. Bring me the lamp. But overall, <laughs> You can't tell me that all of the CGI characters like Abu, Raja, and Yego, and Yes Genie were not your favorite. Whom all the leads acted very well and believable with, 
but these computer-generated characters somehow, some way, had far more emotion in their acting than those live-action. What was truly missing was Gilbert Gottfried's Iago, but I still think this little, well, at times, little fella stole the show every scene he was in. But I'd really like to claim your ass! But, uh, well... Other than Jafar, the ending may just have been the biggest disappointment. You must remember the original with, yes, Jafar is the giant snake, Jasmine gets trapped in an hourglass, and evil puns slithering about. None of that was there. And he can do whatever he wants, and then he gets tricked into becoming a genie. Yes, I know it's the story, but just why? Again, it's Jafar with a, just a little more imp. Ah ha ha ha, I am a genie now, hoo hoo. Be very scared of me. It's just not intimidating. Humorous even. Okay. But if you're like me, you went straight home to binge the original and maybe the two sequels to come after, just to compare. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 57%, and you know what? I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. We have plenty of upcoming remakes to look forward to. Next up is Lion King, and I cannot wait. And I ask this. What would your three wishes be if you had a lamp to rub? A lamp, I said. Let me know, yo. Fam, 